Southern wine that needs just a little bit of salt. <laughs> you got to admit that pretty ass. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson, and I love eggs. I cooked them 39 different ways one day. Travis Lobel had an egg farm, and we decided to see how many different ways we could do that. We took muffin tins, and we put Cointreau in one, brandy in one, rice and all kinds of things. It's not hard to get 39 ways when you're a damn fool, and we have fun doing it. You can cook eggs many ways, but I'll bet you haven't cooked them the way a friend of mine and I did. We were walking along the street near the old Biltmore Hotel in Oklahoma City, and it was 114 degrees, he said. You know, Justin, it's hot enough to fry eggs on the sidewalk. So I said, go get a couple of eggs and let's see. I cracked those two eggs on that sidewalk, sunny side up, of course, and they fried just as pretty as any eggs I ever saw. On this show that was made for Mississippi Educational TV more than 20 years ago, I showed how to have fun cooking eggs, I guarantee. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee, and I'm ready to cook something for you right now, too. A lot of times, us Cajuns work hard all day. We like to work hard and play hard all night, and then we go to sleep. But when we wake up, whoo, that playing hard and working hard and running and playing done caught up with us, yeah, I guarantee. And we're hungry, so we cook up a Cajun breakfast fast, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to cook up a biscuits and omelet and baked eggs. And speaking of eggs, I got a friend named Aubrey Laplace got a store down at St. Gabriel, Louisiana. And one day a little boy came in there and said, Mr. Laplace, you got some hen egg? Aubrey said, you got hen egg and duck egg too? He said, I don't want no duck egg, I want some hen egg. You got some hen egg? He said, oh yeah, got some of them good Lobel farm egg. Little boy said, how much they are, Mr. Laplace? He say, 75 cents a dozen, 15 cents if they cracked. The little boy say, well, crack me a dozen, Mr. Laplace, will you please? <laughs> oh. Gonna make them biscuit. Ooh. I like to make biscuits. I don't make them near often enough, but I, I really get a kick out of making them. I'm gonna take two cup of flour, more or less, mostly about the real measured. Two cup of flour, and I'm gonna put them right here on this sifting. That's one of them, uh, we say in French. Come out of that flour. That's close enough to two. That's two cups, and I'm gonna spread some right out here where I'm gonna put those biscuits, because I don't want them sticking to anything, particularly me. some more hand to that, just in case I need it. Now, I'm gonna put, with this flour, mix all my dry ingredients first, if I possible can, and I can did that. I got me a little measuring spoon here, yeah. I'm gonna put three teaspoons full of baking powder. Not heaping, though, no, about, uh, about level, maybe a little bit better than level. Put that on here, like this. Two, three. Put the lid back on this thing because I don't want it to, to get away from me. And I'm gonna put about um, a half a teaspoon full of soda. Now the reason I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon full of soda is because I'm going to use buttermilk. These are buttermilk biscuits what I'm gonna make and whenever Whenever I use buttermilk, when I use buttermilk to make them biscuits, I always put two pinch of soda. And that's a half a teaspoon. My pinch, that is. I don't know, your pinch may be a little bigger, a little smaller. Ain't no telling. Then I got to put about um, 
a half a teaspoonful of salt on that. Half a teaspoonful of salt. See if I can still measure good. Bet I can. That's a half a teaspoon. See if I got it right. Whew, man, you know, I ought to be ashamed of myself. I got that devil right that time. Now, that's all the dry ingredients what's gonna go in there, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sift this down, mix it up good, and it, uh, get ready to get this thing going out here so I can roll them out. Now, I got a, a this is a wonderful little gadget for cutting your shortening into your, your dry mixture, and you got to do that if you're gonna have good biscuit. I got a little shortening over here, and I'm gonna put about, um, oh, two tablespoonful, maybe a little more, but I, I doubt it. I doubt if I'm gonna put more than that. Maybe, depends on how this looks when I put it on there. This is one, level, two, level, and just a little shade more. I, Could I like, uh, my biscuit to have a, be kind of like shortening bread, you know? I like that very much. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut that into this dough with this little gadget here called a dough cutter or, or a blender, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you call it, but it works. That's the main thing. It fixed there real good. Got a little flour there's to show up when making biscuits. You know, you got to do things like that. Chunk the flour out there. People know what you're doing. And I got some buttermilk here. Funny thing about this buttermilk, it depends on, I'm gonna put about a cup in it and see how it acts. And then, if I need more, I'll put it, but I can't take it out. That's one thing about it. I might have to add some flour. I don't want to do that too. Now you notice I've got that cut in there pretty good. It's all cut real good. Now, to put the buttermilk on that, Make a little hole. Pour it in there. I didn't put that full cup because that may be enough. I doubt it, but it may be enough, and we want to be sure we got enough. But not too much. We get mixed up in that dough, you can't get out of it. You've got it too soft. You know? This dough cutter does a good job, too, of mixing up them buttermilk with the flour. They ain't enough, you see? So I'm gonna put some more on there. Tell you what, too, I got some more here just in case that ain't enough, too. But I think that's enough right now. We're gonna see. Mix this up real good. Yeah, I think I've about got it there. I'm gonna take this over here and put where I've got that flour spread out there to keep from uh, sticking to everything. And I'm gonna put a little more flour on my hands, too. Put it out here, I'm gonna get a rolling pin just like old Maggie used on jig. Yeah. Oh. Got that right there. It's gonna be just right. Just exactly right. And that dough cutter will cut you if you don't look out. You notice how carefully I handle that? Put a little flour on my hand and on this dough so I can roll it out with a rolling pin. Right there, you see them rolling pins? Whoo! <laughs> Put a little flour on that, a little more flour, sprinkle around so we'll be sure that we don't stick up too much. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be pretty, yeah. The best you ever put on your mouth I guarantee. See that try to stick to my rolling pin, just I'm not gonna let it do it. Put a little more flour there, right there, like that. Now we got it. That's a learning. I roll them thin because I don't like real thick biscuit. I like biscuit to the tin. Now I got a biscuit cutter here somewhere. But before I cut them, let me get me a pan. I'm gonna spray that with Pam. I don't know what we did without this, kind of like the invention of sliced bread, you know? It, it really is something. Get that real good on there. Now, 
put this here. I'm gonna get this out of my way, because it's in my way right now. Put it over there where I can get at it. Ooh, coming out of there, you. Yes, sir. -y. You see them biscuits coming out of there, got them cutter working. I guarantee. Four to the alley. I've got my oven preheating over there right now at 475 degrees. Whew, that's hot. I guarantee that's hot. Coming out of there just boom. Come out there, biscuit. Won't you stick there? Try it. I'm not gonna let it do it. Give me some flour on my finger. That's right. You know, you got to work fast with these biscuits because they got a mind of their own. They start rising themselves up. Before you know it, before you wanted to did that. Get them on now. Hey. That's what you call cutting up, rolling in the dough. I guarantee, get on there now, get off my finger. There you going. Get a little more flour on my finger. We ain't gonna, we got it made, you know. I just get these biscuits to act right. There you going there, boy. Got to use this hand this time, now. Thank goodness I'm ambidextrous. That means I'm left-handed with both hands. Yeah. Come here, little fella. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just make me a couple little puddies to put there to look kind of funny. To taste good, though. Hee! <laughs> Come here, tell me. Now you're going. Those are the ones I'll eat. I won't give them to any of y'all, I guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna go put them on the oven. That's a big bit. But first of all, I'm gonna wash my hands because I can't stood this. <laughs> I got to get that off my hand before I can do anything. Yeah. Now, that's a pure sign I'm a good cook and clean cook because I get everything done just right. I guarantee. Now, we're going to the oven. Put this on the oven. I won't waste that. I'll use something. Put it on something. Put it up here. 475 degree pre-hotted. <laughs> now. Sure, I'm glad I got this little towel. Nah, they're gonna turn out better than anyone ever did yet, I guarantee. Isn't that nice, huh? Woo -hoo, boy. Just one little minute, I got to wipe my counter off. I can't stood that. You know, I'm not gonna do like some people I know. All right. You know, what I did didn't remind me of a story. I got a friend that lives in New Road. That's about 35 miles from Baton Rouge, and one day, my friend would walk down the main street of New Road with a Times Picayune unit paper roll up under his arm, you know. And he would look for that smart Cajun what every town got one of. That is, if it's a Cajun town. If it ain't a Cajun town, it's a smart something else, you know. He finally found him. He said, I'm glad for you to see me. He said, I'm glad for you to see me, too. What you want to know? He said, how you know I want to know something? He said, you would not look for me unless you want to know something. Go ahead and ask me. I'm bound to know. He said, all right, I would like for you to tell me where female women's yet is located. <laughs> the smart kid say, what you said? He said, I asked you a silver question and I want a silver answer. I would like for you to tell me where female women's yet is located. The smart kid say, female women don't got a yet. Oh, he said, yes, she has. Oh, no, oh, yeah, big dog. Oh, no, hell no, hell yeah. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> well, that smart kid didn't realize he realized they ain't gonna get someplace to argue like that. He said, look, you so smart, you come and ask me them fool question. How you know a female woman got it yet? He said, I didn't thought you'd ever ask me. He reached under his arm, got that daily New Orleans Times speaking in paper, <laughs> opened it up on the front page. He said, cast your eye right here. Rub your eyeball on the front page <laughs> of this paper. It say right there that a female woman been shot with a 38 special and the bullet is in her yet. <laughs> Right now. Whoa. Don't that put it. I mean, I guarantee that put it. Right now, I'm going to bake some eggs. Now, 
You most probably don't know much about baked eggs, but you can learn right now. We like eggs all kind of ways. Let me spray this with a little Pam, so I can get them out when I get them did. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put just a drop or two of olive oil in each one of these little pans. Muffin tin, just a drop or two. And there's a good reason for putting that on there, too. It's because I like olive oil. <laughs> there we go, and we're putting them on there just bone, just real good. That was a little bit much in there, but I'll eat that one. Now, we got them olive oil on there. Now I got a cup, what I'm gonna broke my egg on. <laughs> That's just in case that egg ain't all it's supposed to be, you know? If it ain't all it's supposed to be and you put it in that pan, you got to wash your whole muffin tin. <laughs> but like this, all you got to do is just put the egg on there. And if it ain't good, you just chunk it out and get another cup and go ahead on. That's one. Be careful, don't broke the yellow, all right. There, two. Boy, that egg, that's a tough little chicken there. <laughs> I'll guarantee here. See, that's what you got to watch. Oh, he was all right. Three. We're going to cook a half a dozen. I never will forget. I asked that lady in, in Birmingham, Alabama once. I said, give me six poached eggs. She said, six, hey. I had them order four, but never had them order six before and told everybody going back to the kitchen. Embarrassed me. But I ate them six poached eggs. Don't worry, none. <laughs> All the eggs is good, so far. Yeah. Ooh wee, tough, tough. Fed a lot of oyster shells to them chicken, make them uh, shell tough like that. How come, that's what they feed them oyster shell for, you know that, don't you? Now, uh, let me tell you. Baked eggs, first we're gonna put two with just a couple of drops of Benedictine, that'd be egg Benedictine, baked. Now the alcohol cook off in about 10 seconds. Man, that smell good. Now we got Quintro. If you like them urns, you're gonna like this right here. Quintro, baked egg. I got it in both of them there, but I'm try it again. Yeah. You can smell the orange blossom there, I guarantee. Now this is creme de mont, green creme de mont. You can use the white if you don't want to color your egg, but we can do them this way like that. Now we're gonna put them in a preheated 325 degree oven and let them bake. How about that? Gonna be put it too. I guarantee. Yeah. Those biscuits looking real good. Now, I'm gonna make you an omelet. Put it on high to get it warmed up. Look at here, there, now. I'm gonna make you a rice, a rice omelet. But before I do that, you know I'm talking about this. I got a police radio in my car, and I was down in South Louisiana not long ago, and I heard this dispatcher way down deep South Louisiana. Say, this is KK3373, calling car three. Car three come in and said, this is car three, go ahead with your message. <laughs> he said, look, what you 1020, that means where you locate. He said, I'm on the expressway heading east. He said, well, turn yourself around and go back west because there's a dead horse traveling west on the expressway. <laughs> now, I'm going to put on this omelet here. You know, that, uh, that uh, man that told me that story, his name is Jean-Pierre Malbrou, close friend. Me, I got a friend. And his mama, five years ago, was 92 year old, and we went to see her and told her we had to leave because we wanted to go see the men go land on the moon. She said, we got to go, we got to go see the men land on that moon. She said, whoo, and she meant that she was as serious as she could be. I hope that moon full when them boys try to land up there, I'll guarantee. <laughs> Now we're gonna make a little omelet here. I put a little bacon drippings in there because I like the taste of it in my omelet. You can put butter. 
olive oil, anything you want. Don't make some different. And I'm gonna whoop this up just the least little bit. And then I'm gonna put them on here. But I tell you what, I've got some onion here, green onion, how you call shallot? And I got some rice right here. Now, I'm not gonna mix that. I'm gonna put it on there. I'm gonna mix one of them. Put the onion. Put that on there like that. Then I'm gonna put the rice on top when I get it in there. Now, we got to turn this down because it's too hot. I'm gonna pour this in there real good. Gotta mix them. Gotta mix them. There we go. Whoo, that sounds good. Don't hit, I guarantee. Now we're gonna put them rices. Scatter them around. My hands is clean. I just made biscuits, wash my hands. <laughs> this is what the Cajuns call a, a egg jambalaya. They call this an egg jambalaya, too. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's fine. Now that's cooking real good. I've got to let it cook a little bit before I put the lead on it, but I'm gonna put the lead on there in a minute and let it get cooked better. I leave this up here to put my omelet on when it's dead. Put this down out of my way. Whew. I got to check my biscuit too. I don't want them to burn though. Hold yourself still. Ooh that's the best I ever made. Ha. I guarantee that's the best I ever made. I got to have a little hot pad here just in case. I need this right here. Oh yeah, man, you talk about good. She's cooking up a storm. Just get after it there. Put on medium high. Now, I'm gonna close the lead on this. <laughs> Didn't spill a drop. I usually spill a drop or two every time I do that. Wipe this off, keep things clean. Put this out of the way. Now, let me tell you right now, you're gonna have biscuit. We're gonna have coffee. Okay, you ain't got to have a little coffee. Let me see if I can't put a little on my cup right now. Got to let them omelet cook a little bit. Let me see about those eggs. They're coming along just bomb. I'm gonna raise that oven a little bit. It's not quite hot enough. Put it to 350. And she'll get going. I guarantee. Louisiana coffee, I want you to know that ain't no, this ain't no Mississippi coffee, though. No. This is Louisiana coffee. <laughs> right here. Yeah. yeah, that's fine, too. I'll put that there. Now, I got the... I'm not gonna look at them omelet yet. You know, I just can't hardly wait though, you know it. Let me see if I can look at it just at least a little bit. Oh yeah, you come on there, you rascal, you. That's cooking pretty, I guarantee. Hoo-wee! Just get after that, you stand. <laughs> Cook up a storm. Oh man. I tell you right now, it's nothing better than a good omelet made with anything. We make omelets out of everything. Bronzewanger. Now imagine a Cajun with a name like Bronzewanger. We do that. We make, we put that in an omelet. Cheese. We also get shrimps, dried shrimps. We put it in a blender, make a powder out of that, make an omelet with that. That's a shrimp omelet. And it's better than the one chopped up. It really is. All kind of omelet. We make that and enjoy doing it too. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee. And I got to turn it over. I wonder how much I'm going to spill this time. I just ain't going to spill none. Didn't spill a drop. Isn't that good? I guarantee I'm proud of myself. <laughs> no, I got to cast my eye. Oh, I don't believe I'll even show this to y'all. It looks so good. I don't believe you can stood it. Nah, no, there you are at now. This is fine. Woo wee, look at that. Can you see that with the cameras? Don't that pretty? I guarantee that pretty. Oh, man. I gotta let it cook just at least a little bit more. Then I'm gonna take it out, just like that. Oh, it's cooked. Not cooked enough. You know, you got to cook the inside of them. If you don't cook them inside, they'll run all over everything. I don't want that to happen, though. <laughs> Ooh, that's bad. The rice is already cooked. Remember, I used cooked rice. I didn't use rice that wasn't cooked. There she are. I guarantee I'm gonna eat it. I took this over to the table. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to just fix a little of this right now for me to eat. Oh, ho, ho, you kid. Yeah, my baked days aren't quite done, but I knew that might happen. So I just happened to have 
some more that I fixed just a least little bit earlier, and I'm gonna haul off there and eat one of these with a, with a little green tint to it. That's creme de mort, a creme de mort egg. Got to be good. A guarantee it's got to be good. Hoo wee You know, the rice for this omelet came from the best rice country around. That's in South Louisiana. And I want to tell you something. A real Cajun is a person what can walk by a 500-acre field of rice and estimate to the teaspoonful how much gravy it'll take to cover the whole damn thing. Now, that's a real case. I guarantee you. Now, I'm gonna throw you some mash, too. Put a little salt on that egg, I'm gonna eat them. But I wanna tell you about my, my good friend that had a Sunday school class, and she was teaching her cheering all about Noah and the big flood. It'd been raining, you know. She said Noah was told to get take two animals of every kind and put it on the hark. And he built them hark on a high hill. So when the rain come, that rain 40 day and 40 night, you couldn't see the Mississippi River to buy you or nothing else. Everything covered with water. Well, it quit raining after 40 day and 40 night. Then they got to find some land soon because the food getting low. And so old Noah sent out a dove. That dove come back and he don't got nothing. Tijon, what does that show? Tijon said, I don't know. Well, he waited about a couple of days, he sent another dove out. And that dove come back with an olive branch on his mouth. She said, Tisha, are you bound to know what that mean? He said, I don't know. Marie, what about, oh, that mean that he done found land because the olive don't grow on no water, grow on land. She said, that's right. In a couple of more days, he sent another dove out. And that dove did not come back. Do you know what that showed, Tisha? She said, I know, I know, I know. She said, what did that show, Tisha? She said, that show, the dove season don't open up in South Louisiana, I guarantee you. <laughs> Thank you.